Está bien, interesante. Thank you, Juan Garay. You have a couple of minutes for questions and debates. Excellent presentation. Thank you very much. Congratulations. I want to make a comment and I want to ask a question. You might sound stupid because I'm still starting to digest what you are saying. The question would be, we start to assign causes or point fingers. Or what phenomenons can explain these relationships? Knowing, obviously, we cannot do it because the data don't allow us to. But also because of where we are, if you could tell us, I don't know if you want to give us one, two, or three hypotheses that, from your point of view, could explain the data, the results, and something which is very important for what I'm going to be presenting tomorrow is the nature, counterintuitive, because the results do not adjust to many of the models that we have, especially at global level in health terms. I would like to hear your three hypotheses. And I have a methodological question. What, uh, where we go, what are you going to do? What, uh, what, or ha what have you been doing? I know this, all of this has to be disseminated. What are you going to be doing so as to have the contributions by other methodologists, methodo 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 methodology experts? They're trying to be holistic, as you just said. And sometimes also suggest all the lines of action. I don't know. Let's talk bilaterally. I don't want to take your time, and I think that your questions are smarter than my capacity for responding to them. But the first thing is, look, the deep roots of these dynamics of exhaustion and hoarding it dominates the human dynamics and the society. I tried to, during my year in Berkeley, I uh, tried to analyze it in depth to understand it from two points of view. First, the anthropological and cultural, actually, spoke, scope of uh, the Western country based on the actual the human life, which is higher and also more important than the others. This is why we are despising and not caring for nature. Well, human success has been considered as holy. There are social models, I understand. They want to believe in the European Union. I fo fight for this, even though there are issues too. Also, they have been mitigating factors only. As far as success, we applaud success. And I wrote an article in the El País newspaper in Spain a week ago because we're the first weekly they have uh, actually showed Qatar in the front page, the, the Mecca of luxury. In the same the same magazine next page, there was a series that is called Histories of, 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 of Doctors Without Borders of a 13-year-old girl giving birth in Ethiopia. So the, the, the next page, we saw a news of Barcelona the football team that you might know. Uh, it had uh, Qatar, and then it had this situation. Imagine, this is a newspaper. And this, uh, with my wife, uh, we visited the Cathedral of Toledo, the richest in the world, where treasures also taken from, from this land of gold and silver. And outside, the actually, we have actually a program of charity, a, ch a charity program. This is related to this value that we give as supervalent to individual success because we, we, we have to turn it into the collective good. But the e Eastern countries have done this better than us, the Oriental countries. The second question, 
of why this analysis, why this analysis looks does, are so different from the other type of analysis, uh, in international health analysis. International health uh, an analysis, we are better in AIDS, in child mortality, in TB. For me, the response is easy, and it's the same. We do not relate each one against each other. We do not the equity measure inequality advancements. I will see how the train goes by, but by both wagons are separated, and this gap between wagons actually means that it's a lot of money is being wasted. For me, this model, how many avoidable deaths we'll have in the next five, 50 years. This is a whole concept, and the third thing we uh, we'll, talk, we'll talk it over at dinner or during breakfast tomorrow morning. Any further questions? You, your work was, fun, was wonderful. I'm highly impressed by the work that you did and the effort that, we, that you are dedicating to this. I have a doubt. Is it when you talk about avoidable deaths, unfair deaths, what do you refer to in terms of statistics? Only avoidable deaths, or if you are adding yet another factor to this graph? And the other question would be, once again, we keep on talking about a transformation of accumulation or hoarding model. Hoarding accumulation model, we add another view. Or we can say we cannot go like the on like this anymore. What happens if this has already happened if when we have these models for the decision makers? If you have done this, and what is the reaction of the decision makers? Well, the, your first question, we have to take care with the words. We speak avoidable death for injustice is not an avoidable death for a vaccine that can prevent a disease. It's a concept, a statistic, mathematical concept, that there are models that tell us that with resources of being available to all and sustained for new generations, you can have a better level of health. And also, in, if we go uh, below that level, those are avoidable deaths. It's a statistic uh, model. Actually, if I go to the street and and actually a brick hits my head. Actually, this has nothing to do with it. It's completely different. I, this was your question. We need epistemologists. We need statisticians, demographers, historians. This really, I dare to say that this is a new discipline, is a new way of defining health, of measuring health, and acting on there's different lives. I imagine a world, a world where we can see one to really respect life. We cannot go beyond this limit. No, go in order to respect these limits, we need redistribution, global, res global redistribution models to, to uh, be adapted to this reality. In a genie, above this, it could be in, incompatible to life. And automatically, we need to actually and full, full progressive distribution in order to limit this abundance and this poverty or misery. So this avoidable death by injustice, by injustice is a methodolog methodological construct and how the people have reacted to this. Yes. No, so I, uh, okay, I come here. Well, here with our colleague from Uruguay, actually they f are fascinated by this in Uruguay. I have been to Uruguay to speak about it three times. And also we, we have uh, actually, you know what? There are many articles that are quoted in the book that say the most sophisticated way of measure equality is to say what are actually factors that influence geography, whatever. So we're going to be seeing how, what's the variation of health between these variables. And then, no, it's fake. We measure inequalities in a sophisticated and intelligent fashion. What matters is uh, for us to define the best possible sustainable health. Our aspiration is to have uh, a goal actually is in motion without this 
we are arbitrary in our facts. We just measure actually inequality we act on poverty. I very feel very honored to be here. It is a region in the world that I hope that this type of ideas, provoking ideas, will be developed in their plans is South America. And I, I want to find many allies to see if this can be debated at national level from Europe. I, in Europe, they beat me up. You know, I, and I am Juan Garay, I'm not representing anybody because in Europe they want to kill me if I start talking about this. Well, excellent presentation. Unfortunately, we didn't have more time. I have uh, two short questions at methodological level. One is, we could comment on reliability of data sources of information. Reliability, what instruments did you, you use to measure happiness? What macro variables were included in measuring it? happiness for the reliability of data. You know how, how data come from the United States, it's estimated 60, 70% are just calculations and estimates in, in surveys. So it's clear, it's clear that they are not very reliable and trustworthy. They're, none of them is trustworthy. So the comparison is more or less actually, yeah, actually is kind of uh, reliable within range. This, I just want to poke you. We need to do this better at the level of the different countries, right? So the second thing is happiness is measured, uh, is measured actually in the muscle, muscular tonus in your face. All the surveys being made, there have been six standardized methods and measuring this is something that we have to do. Happiness is a concept that varies uh, in different cultures. So there is a global happiness report of with Jeffrey Sachs. Jeffrey Sachs, I think his peer hats, um, so many things I think that in, that at his, actually his wife actually is the boss at his house, the, at home, because he is a leader in many other things outside the home. Also, what is going to happen? It's simple and standardized also meant with a lot of sophistication to measure happiness. Of course, there are many indicators that are very complex. Also, there are many indicators, including sleep time and then sleeping hours. Sleep hours is an idea also that is in constant evolution. It's important to think, we have to think about happiness, how much happiness is being lost. We want to try, try, try to make a Actually, uh, we want to make a negative correlation between happiness and hoarding. This is a study I'm going to uh, I'm going to do next year. I think that countries like Bhutan and Nepal could be there. But what happens is that these countries, for example, the Bhutan hasn't had uh, actually a life expectancy above average. Brazil is okay, but it actually hoards. It's a hoarder. But actually, we see it's a. Uh, and but we still our carbon footprint is still bad. I could talk about many other things too. But I say, actually, we cannot just talk about countries. These are the countries that are in better shape. Costa Rica is a country that are models to be followed. They have a lot of expectancy, the best in the world, and an income that is lower, and a planetary level that is low. But let's but be honest. Yet Costa Rica is, uh, sorry, is about to or pass to the level of uh, hoarding in Cuba is ab about, about to pass the global uh, planetary level of exhaustion. We see the what is going to happen. But I think also that there is a big challenge in measuring uh, oh, this. At the end, it's provoking, let's say, the countries with the best human development index also are countries that have a life expectancy of one, two, also Norway, is a life expectancy of one, yes, 78. Are healthy is 70, or around uh, with happiness, but this exhaustion and hoarding effect in 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 Norwegians, it goes at the 70 years, actually. So this is the idea I wanted to pose to you. I think that this in a country or another, in Sue Isaacs, with friends like you, we, uh, we hope that we can see this as another way of seeing or addressing uh, 
help with the dynamics, political dynamics, social dynamics, and with the two big cancers of our society that turn us also in a tumor for Earth, which is exhaustion and hoarding. Okay? Thank you very much. Any more questions? Okay. Yes, good afternoon, sir. Well, firstly, I would like to highlight my joy for being here today, learning more than public policies in social determining factors, uh, intersectoriality. I'm so glad to be here today. In principle, in the first unit of the course, we had we were seeing issues that had been uh, touched by each one of the presenters. For example, intersectoriality, public policies, social determination, and inequality, and, and inequality and inequity. I want to ask any of the presenters, but I would like to know what would be your perception, the, speaker per, the per, speaker's perspe perception, we would like to know what would be the recommendations. But you may give to the state of the people present here for implementing public policies, intersectoral, taking into consideration the, the social determination and the promotion of health. And that would be more or less the questions that I wanted to make. I prefer my mentors to reply they know more. <coughs> I try to say something in some responses to be concrete and perhaps simplify things. We have to build consensus, political consensus based on preferential in, in the proposal that Juan is presented, which is very challenging, using exactly a new methodological innovation, which is very relevant. I am part uh, responsible for the indication of Juan to be a part of this group of, of uh, speakers. Oscar was very well known on based on political consensus and not by the metrics that we have, but with metrics such as, uh, we call tell them metrics, innovative metrics, uh, up to an Im impressing limit, we may look for, con search for social con and political consensus to build interventions able to reduce uh, the uh, ecological footprint, ensuring uh, happiness with all the other ideas that were raised during the discussion. I believe that there is a contribution of the health sectors, there is a contribution of the professionals that has to uh, be used with all the instrument that we have to come to a consensus, to discuss, but they are problems or proposals, including social mobilization and political mobilization based upon the best that we may have as evidences. This would be one opinion. They will always be, independently of the evidences, there will be political consensus and social consensus. This is very clear. And we have to deep, the, the have deepen with the best metrics based on the negative points represented by indicators of health, but also with new metrics and interpretation of data as uh, Juan is inviting us to think. So I think, I think it's a question of political and social consensus for which the evidences are important and the uh, mm, proposals and advocacy that can uh, have the professionals will be very useful. So we have to get prepared, politically prepared, 
with uh, a will to have this uh, transformation. There is a role for the health professional, but other dimensions have to be added, also political and social dimensions. Well, oh, congratulations, an excellent presentation. Uh, and it's really a challenge. Everything that we have to work on and develop. I wanted to ask two comments. The first is regarding the construction of all this, because mm, this you can uh, you can work with all this in the interior of our country, and this is a great challenge. So, and to make decisions more specific, and, and adapt it to the reality of our countries, independently of the political organization we may have on one hand. And because we require to build the information. It is not a lot. Uh, we have to build information systems that allow us to start working and monitor them. Um, and the second is in relation to this kind of information, to which type of decision will lead us. Perhaps, uh, how do we manage the information? Because we have the classical indicators, we know the decisions they may arrive to, but this kind of information is going around to which decisions we may take, intervention, developing program, because this is forcing us to a very uh, complete management of everything. Uh, I want your comments. Availability of information, the building of these information systems in our countries, and the other thing is ratio with the decision making processes that is uh, really a challenge. When we have a new challenge, we need um, new information and there is resistances. Uh, in these countries, register almost, mm, some countries have almost 300 indicators. I worked a lot for years in Africa. In Rwanda, we had 600 indications imposed by the donors in many cases. But this leads us to uh, this fragmented vision of inequalities, disease, poverty. And I would say, we need something different like uh, somebody who's looking for a key that is lost under the table. And when they find it, they say, no, why do you look for your key there? Because it's the only place where we find light. The interesting thing is that this is something very simple, very logical, and very strong. To start with, we need three indicators. In Mexico, after many discussions with the public health system, uh, I will have a meeting in this same week to see how the national health uh, <coughs> study, one of them is the life expectation, is the minimum basic indicator on health that we have to have. It is absurd to uh, measure the rates of such a disease if we don't have that indicator. The other one is income which is complicated, but very important, not only because of the relationship between the income, which is one of the most important sources of distribution of power. There are many theories, classification of labor conditions and the roles of society and so on, which do not go directly related to income, but they, they have their influence. It is very, very important for the new uh, tax systems Equality. We cannot speak about tax, uh, uh, health equality, without referring to tax equality. If there is a possibility of tax redistribution according to the levels of equality and also regarding the uh, indirect taxes and basic goods, there is a possibility in Spain with all these crises we may also pay the medicines according to my income. 
And if you have uh, such a situation, you may also not pay for your medicines. And the third point, which is a paradox, we are contaminating uh, the planet very dangerously, and we don't mention who of you knows which has been the carbon f uh, fingerprint until today? Who knows it here in this room? The most important of our contribution to what we leave to our children is how we are uh, contaminating the planet, polluting the planet. And my dream is to have a Mexico in which may have a list of purple spots. Purple spots, why purple, which is the mixture of the uh, white, purple, and, and green. So it's um, spots that will indicate these places have a good health, also in terms of uh, happiness, uh, enjoying, uh, enjoying <coughs> happiness, and not accumulating. And the third one, hoarding. And the third one, they are not exhausting resources. These are points of reference for the rest of the country as models, as a standards to uh, measure inequity uh, in other areas. If some of the countries wish to start some map of that kind in your country, uh, reference districts that are possible and sustainable to study in university, uh, in the Senate, I'm here to help. No more questions? Just to congratulate your presentation. When in the morning we spoke about interdisciplinarity, what more? What more than looking more than the hospital, uh, child, the maternal days. What you have presented is an excellent proposal that will demand a strong political work in order to break the paradigm of thinking in well-being according to the income. This is a very strong work. And if Isaacs provides support, I think this could be, to some extent, be very helpful and achievable. What is proposed after this? Which actions and interventions? Because we don't see specific actions, as you said. And what have you thought about this? I believe that also very simply, we have to try to simplify our thoughts. So all the dynamics is lighter than. Three interesting areas. If you have models within a country, units, districts, municipality that are sustainable. They indicate some standards which ca everybody can, uh, uh, everybody. and within five years, we will have other, which may be also higher, but three important areas. First, the places in the country, districts that have an income below the standards need a redistribution model uh, territorial uh, cohesion and tax distribution. This is critical, crucial. And this model allows a very strong argument. This is for me the key. Health has to measure, can become a parameter uh, to transform society. Health will, be, will do more by provoking justice models than addressing disease. In the best system, perhaps recover 30% of lost health for a better coverage of treatment. This is the great challenges to, uh, uh, to uh, overcome the barrier of mitigation and go there with minimum dignity conditions. Another one, according to ecological models, we cannot have as great models the, con the consuming and uh, polluting cities and the extraction of resources from the soil. These models also uh, could also light new forms, not only political, of individual ethics. And um, ways of life which involve a healthy life 
expectations. These are the blue spots. Uh, some communities in the world that have more than 10% of people that surpass the 100 years of age. And there is a high proportion surpassing them in their 90 years. What is the difference with the others? And these are studies which are very extensive. This is no, um, doesn't mean more number of cars or more university education, but this is key. These keys within a country can be really transforming. And they are very simple. They are not 50 policies. We, I am saying this in a very uh, simple manner, uh, but each one of them, as I said before, I have, uh, uh, th there is a 160 page book on this, and I can share with you all the information. We have interactive maps. These have more than 3,000 graphs, 5,000 maps, and trying to represent these ideas in such a manner as to inspire and becoming a model, which are not the current models of accumulation and hoarding. Yep. Uh, thank you very much for your patience.